It's the first summit finish of La Vuelta. Welcome to highlights of stage five right here on GCN Racing. Yesterday we had our second consecutive bunch sprint and it couldn't have been closer on the line. 22 year old Dutch national champion Fabio Jakobsen pipping Irish champion Sam Bennett by a matter of millimetres to take his first Grand Tour stage win in his first Grand Tour. On GC it's still Nicholas Roach of Team Sunweb in the lead by that same two second margin over Quintana. Today it was for the climbers though, 170.7 kilometres finishing at the Havalambre Observatory, 1,950 metres above sea level up a climb known as the Peak of the Vulture. It's a tough one that's never been used before, the last 5 kilometres averaging over 10%. Despite this one looking good for a breakaway, only three riders set off up the road this morning. Jose Harada of Team Cofidis was the best placed on GC at 13 minutes. He was joined by the Burgos BH pairing of Yetzer Boll and current KOM leader and prolific breakaway entrant, Angel Madrazzo. Madrazzo had skewered the maximum five points atop the first and second cat climbs of the day, but on the third he was beginning to pay for his efforts of the last few days, unable to stay with the pace being set by Harada. He didn't give up though, he pushed on over the top and made his way back up to the head of the race. By this point it was beginning to look possible for them, almost 10 minutes the gap between the break and the bunch with 40 k remaining. Behind things were reasonably calm in the bunch, everyone seemingly content to just wait for the final climb to the finish. Bowl would take the maximum points and 3 bonus seconds at the intermediate sprint in Manzanara as the gap continued to rise. And it was close to 11 minutes as this nasty incident occurred. Two riders and Bahrain Marina going down hard and causing a chain reaction behind. Phil Bauhaus was hurt the worst and he was soon being treated back at the race doctor's car. Thankfully though, there didn't appear to be any broken bones, but that road rash is going to sting in bed tonight. EF Education First had a number of cars to play today, Uran, Higita and Hugh Carthy all looking to be on decent form at the moment. Approaching the final climb though, Madrazzo was almost taken out by his own team car. He hit his back wheel, fleeing offline and into Harada who himself came close to hitting the rocks on the side of the road. That was a close call and the DS would have been breathing a big sigh of relief that it wasn't worse. As the leaders approached the final climb, the gap to the bunch was down to under 9 minutes. Still a decent buffer, but having been out there all day, it'd still be touch and go as to whether they'd take the stage, particularly with the likes of Team Ineos driving things at warp speed behind. With 6.5 k's to go, it looked to be game over for Madrazzo. Not a surprise given how many breakaways he's been in at this year's race already. Behind there was a brief slowing as they waited for the steeper final part of the climb. Uh, this however is Madrazzo back on the attack. You can't keep this guy down. Whatever happened he was doing an amazing job for his teammate Bol who was able to sit on Harada's wheel. Castano the next team to hit the front looking to take some of the time back that Lopez lost to some key rivals on stage 2. Known as McLovin, I think Madrazzo's new nickname could be Yo-Yo. That's exactly what he was doing out front, dropped yet again and watching the other two sail up the road. Ducarfi's work on the front put pay to the chances of Wout Pools amongst others, but it was Valverde, the world champion, clearly feeling good, that was the first big name to put in a proper attack, and for a while there was no reaction. Kellerman would also get dropped, as would his teammate and race leader Nico Roach in the red jersey. The Irishman in a group here of Uran, Mikea and Chavez. The American set Kuss was on a flyer today though, and it was the young American who brought Valverde back, doing an amazing job for Primoz Roglic. By this point it was game over for Roach, his hopes of holding onto the jersey had gone. It was only a match of time before this happened though wasn't it? Miguel Angel Lopez in the best young riders jersey putting in a huge attack with 3 kilometres to the top, nobody else able to follow him. This for me though was one of the riders of the day, that was Tadej Pogacar the youngest rider in the race, just a few seconds behind Valverde who had gone off in pursuit of Lopez with Roglic for company. Meanwhile, the break by this point looked almost certain to take the stage, but would it be between two or three? Madrazzo was once again clawing his way back into contention. And in fact, in the closing few hundred metres, he was not only back into contention, but on the front. What an incredible ride by the 31-year-old Spaniard. This is the point at which he went on the attack, and behind, Harada was unable to match his speed. Glancing over his shoulder with just a few hundred metres remaining, Madrazzo knew by this point that he'd got the race win, an incredible ride, an incredible result and thoroughly well deserved. 
Wouldn't be long though after the second and third place riders Bol and Harada respectively that fourth place would cross the line, that being Miguel Angel Lopez. 12 seconds later it would be Valverde and Roglic, but that was a big lesson to everybody in terms of Lopez's form. Behind, Quintana was doing his best to limit his losses to the teammate who attacked him, coming in with Kuss and Chavez a further 42 seconds back. If you ever want a lesson in perseverance and never giving up though, this is it. Madrazo has been in a break in three of the four road stages of this year's race. He was dropped on the penultimate climb, dropped multiple times on the last climb and still won. And I, for one, am extremely happy for him. Here's confirmation of the top 10 on the stage. It was a valiant effort though from Roach, but he dropped to fifth place on GC by the end of the day. Miguel Angel Lopez back in the red jersey. He now sits 14 seconds in front of Primoz Roglic. Nara Quintana in third at 23. Teammate Valverde in fourth at 28 seconds. Tomorrow could also be described as a summit finish, although it's nowhere near as hard as today. A shade under 200 k there are four climbs, two at the start and two near the finish. This one really does have breakaway written all over it, so I spy with my little eye something beginning with TDG. Thomas de Ghent for the win tomorrow for me. And we'll see you then to find out everything that happened. <laughs>